Well, hello and welcome on in to another movie review from MBE. I'm one of your co-hosts, Stephen John McLaughlin, our other co-host and probably main presenter for this <laughs> format, it's John C. Walsh. How are you doing, John? Format, Stephen. What is a format? There is no it's all format a state here. State of mind. <laughs> this is all off the cuff, well, straight guys, from our brains. We did promise you we would do a movie review on and Houdin, and we are doing it. And Houdin. Yeah, John, you said you were not going to do that. <laughs> Threw me under the bus right away. To me. Yeah, under done and, and, and had done. Had uh, whatever it is, that's what we're doing anyway. From 2018, John. This is directed by uh, Siram uh, Ragavan and stars the likes of Tabu, Ayushman Karani, uh, the main Redita man, Apte, Akash. Anil Dawan, and Manav Vij. I think we've mentioned the main five players in this, uh, who we'll probably be talking about the most anyway as we go through this review experience, John. But I'm going to pass it over to you now, and you can take us through this review experience. And I'll start by the actual rating system that we utilise on this channel, Stephen. Yeah. It used to be an F to an A+. Plus. That has been scrapped. We now use a basic 1 to 10 scale, sliding scale. 1, an utter horror show. Not a movie you would ever wish to see. I have never seen a one. I have seen some bad, bad movies. John Travolta's <laughs> The Fanatic, I think it was. That's not even a one. Yeah. There is ones out there. I've just not watched them. This movie is not a one, rest assured. All the way up to a ten. A ten is an outstanding movie. It's perfection. Mm. It is the likes mm. of The Godfather. The Godfather 2. The Shawshank Redemption. Apocalypse fucking now. American Psycho, I'd say. Not even this cycle from Alfred Hitchcock. Actually, American Psycho, I love that movie. Yeah. Not a 10. Talking crap. That's the rating system, Stephen. That's how we rate the movies. So bear that in mind. When we get to the end, we actually give this a numerical <coughs> rating out of 10. Yes. That will give you a sense of where we view this movie on our scale. That doesn't mean that's where what you rate the movie. I'm just putting that out there now because there will be people. We've seen it, Stephen. You've put shorts out. People have disliked my videos in particular <laughs> because I've gave it a rating they don't agree with. That's yeah. not your rating, yeah. that's my rating. Yeah. You have your rating, <laughs> perfectly entitled to have it. <laughs> that aside, Stephen, the way we usually structure these reviews, this is going to be very laid back, chilled off the cuff. We'll, we'll basically break down the story. Yeah. We'll break down the structure of the movie, we'll break down technical stuff, we'll break down acting performances. We will discuss this movie, Stephen. And I'm going to start with Sri Ram Raghavan, a director who's only did 10 movies. Yeah. We've yeah. not had any interactions with this man's work to date. This is the very first time we've watched one of his movies. We, of course, Stephen, reacted to the trailer a good year and a half ago. Yeah, forgot I about was taken it. Yeah, yeah. by the trailer. I thought it looked very interesting. It was a unique concept, certainly from the movies we had watched to date. It must have been a recommendation, though, John, that trailer reaction, because it, it had already been out three a good years bit, at, that, yeah. at that point. Um, it's obviously a four-year-old film now, so. But it, but it was catchy, Stephen. The trailer, yeah, the yeah. vibe. This main man, Akash, had this sort of yeah. little maverick streak about him, and I just liked the tone change in the middle of the actual trailer itself. The other time I was taken by a tone shift in the trailer was Parasite, so I was looking yeah. forward to seeing this at some point. It took us a while. <clears throat> we went down many rabbit holes, but we finally got into watching this movie, Stephen. That side though, yeah. as we said, not seen much of Sri Ram's work. This is our first sort of interaction with the director. How did you think the director did? Before we get into the actual yeah. structure, Stephen, because the single most important thing in a movie is the main man helming the movie. Yeah. It's his sort of creative project. He has not he's written the he wasn't the primary writer. He wrote the movie alongside Ariat Bishvas and Yogesh Chandikar. Yeah. There was three writers. This is a also his project. I always like it, John, and when... You, you um, can tell when, when he's up it. Yeah, when a director is involved in the writing, it always helps, I think. Mm -hmm. It's something that they're very passionate about then. Uh, that's the kind of indication I get from any director that is involved in the writing because they're invested. They're invested in the story. Invested in the characters. Something and as complex as this as well, well yeah. Stephen. It's a complex yeah. story. Particularly the last 40 minutes of it, John. Yeah. Um, I felt... And, and I know we're getting to structure and we're getting to... Uh, the positives and negatives about the structure yeah. as well um, as the, the review rolls merrily forward but in terms of uh, directing John you're right I think he's done a few television stuff mostly yeah. some shorts 
I don't know how he many. Was a writer in the nineties? Yeah, I don't know how many of these films that he's directed have been big films. Maybe somebody in the comments section can help us out here. But in terms of this film, I thought he, he handled it well, considering the, the complexity of the structure and um, performances he uh, got out the there. Performances, as well. John was There's very some big important. Names in there. there is, yeah. Taboo. Um, we were informed. One of the yeah, yeah. best actresses on the subcontinent, so he's working yeah. with some brilliant names here. And, and you look at IMDb, it comes under comedy, crime, music, mystery and thriller. Yeah. That's a hard thing to juggle. Uh, in terms of, I know we're getting the structure, John, but when everyone recommended this, they were saying this is a good mystery thriller. And it's funny because the first 20, 30 minutes of this, it came off like a romantic comedy. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, the, 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 yeah. the tone did shift. But I know we're going to get into that anyway, John. But Steve, I thought, I I thought it was very... I thought he handled it well. Yeah, I mean, I get vibes of La La Land from this movie. Uh, and at different mm. sections, he had this brief interaction, sort of potent romantic relationship with the Radika, apt character Sophie. Yeah. And then they sort of, they break up, they move their separate ways. Then at the end, which we'll get into, because I actually enjoyed the ending quite a bit. Yeah. Very reminiscent of La La Land when Mia and Seb sort of cross paths again after many years. And it's a sort of what if... Yeah. situation but it wasn't to be they've made life different life from themselves but I thought the director uh, did a great job of getting performances out of a, a wide range of ages uh, in the actors we were speaking about Taboo I think she's 51, yeah. 52 Anil Dewan's way older again yeah. this man's fucking He's prehistoric veteran, veteran yeah Ayushman Kurana is like late 30s, yeah. Radi, Rad, Radika Rapt he's sort of mid 30s at this point they would have been younger early to mid 30s Late forties personalities, John, and these characters as well, which was very important. You know, um, I don't know the actors, so I can't really base it on that. But I'll base it on the, the the personalities within the characters, all different shapes and sizes, if you like. How many times, though, Stephen, have we seen like a Rinjinikam fucking with sort of a a lesser experienced at that point, VG Seth Apathy? Yeah, or something like that. A huge age gap. You get a veteran actor yeah. and a younger actor. Yeah. It's very hard to pull that off uh, in terms of performances. Not making the situation yeah. relax for the younger actor and it rubs off in the performance yeah, they're in awe yeah. of this sort of veteran and it damages their performance I've seen um, Manoj Bashpai yeah. in interviews yeah, yeah. speaking about how he was on set with some of his heroes yeah. back in the day and it almost disrupted his performance because he was in awe of them just <laughs> being yeah. in their presence John, that's a, it's them. a universal thing isn't it though it's, it's something that, that all actors experience throughout the globe it's not just it's not just privy to India and yeah. acting, and we have seen it. You're absolutely right, and you you use Rajinikanth as a as a, an example. That's a a great example. One thing I have learned since watching Indian cinema is you know a veteran actor, and although we don't know much about Anil da- Dawan, um, we both questioned: Is this guy a veteran actor? Yeah. Because we're seeing is this archival footage. Is he playing himself? We didn't know too much. Obviously, he wasn't playing himself. He was, but they were using stock footage of his work from maybe the, the 1970s and the 1980s um, to sort of reference this mm-hmm. character, uh, the Pramod character and his sort of career he's had but you can always sense a veteran actor John, you can always sense it regardless of where it's, it is in the world um, Taboo, I mean at that point she yeah. would have been veteran, she'd have been late 40s yeah, yeah, probably yeah, been around yeah. the industry for a good 20 years yep. and she you can tell Stephen in the performance that he gets from her yeah She's the main villain in this. She's almost like a pantomime, pant, pant yeah. mine, sort of. She vaudevillian. gets under your skin, yeah. Is, yeah. That, is that the word vaudevillian? Is that? I don't know. Yeah. May have made that up. Sort of villain. Yeah. She's sort of larger than life villain. But also funny as hell. So for me, I thought the director, just getting this review off the sort of foundational stage, I thought he did a brilliant, brilliant yeah. job. In terms of the story, Stephen, as we say, it's a very complex story. You says yourself, the first act is first 40 minutes in a sense. First 30 minutes, I'd say, is very much introducing us to a cash. This sort of guy, he's a blind man, but yeah. very quickly, it's re- revealed very quickly that he isn't blind. It's all an act. And obviously, he's doing it for artistic reasons to sort of heighten his senses whilst he's sitting at this piano. He's a pianist, not a pianist. Yeah, John. Because I think I was, someone <laughs> says in the comments. I know it wasn't uh, me because I don't use that <laughs> word. <laughs> P- pianist. The yeah. reason I use that word is because it's fucking the correct, correct word. Um, yeah. I think of the pianist. Yeah, people say Adrian a piano Brody. player, yeah. Yeah, piano player. That's not yeah. fucking right. He's a pianist. A pianist. Uh, a guitar player. When he's sitting, yeah, a yeah. guitar player. Yeah, a guitarist. <laughs> when he's sitting at the yeah. piano, 
that helps him perform better, it reduces the distractions. That's introduced very early on. The relationship, his interactions with Sophie, very potent, romantic mm. sort of relationship they go on. They have this sort of one night stand, I yeah. want to call it. That's all introduced in the first 30, 40 minutes of this movie. <coughs> it's her that in, brings the interactions with Simi and obviously Pramod to the forefront in this movie. It's almost Sophie's fault, which is ironic because as you get to the middle part of the movie and you get to the end of the movie, she's almost harbouring a grudge against him or you're conning other people, are you? Yeah. She's angry at him for lying about his blindness or lack of at that point. But it's her that brings him into this sort of trendy little bar where he's playing the piano. He catches the, the interest of Pramod and thrusts him into this horrific situation he has to face in this yeah. movie. It's all down to Sophie. That is but the first half of the movie isn't the, the most enjoyable for me, Stephen. It doesn't really get a first third of the movie, yeah. sorry. First quarter. It's yeah. not until we're, we're in that apartment you're, of Pramod's. Yeah, you're, you're kind of full-blown going into a, a romantic comedy, basically, in the first half hour. Uh, you're going right into a genre. Mm-hmm. Um, and I get it. I, I get they're trying to establish characters very early on. They're trying to get us to understand the dynamics between the characters as well, and what their what their all their purpose is in the film. Um, the Sophie character for me um, was largely in that first half of the film, mm-hmm. and then fell away. Obviously, but I, I get it because she's obviously not talking to him, so it's all through his sort of perspective as well, and that. It's one thing we talked about as well, John, and I think some people in the comment section as well on the community were talking about this as well in terms of the narrative of this. Um, Akash is our main sort of um, master of ceremonies and Mm -hmm. it's going to be his version of events as well. So how reliable are those versions of events? We've seen that with Joker. We get that obviously later on in the film in terms of interpretation. A lot of people have highlighted it in the community as well. Things that we didn't pick up on, John. I mean, I'm completely blanking on the very start of the movie where it's a rabbit. Yeah, yeah. Scene with the rabbit. Yep. And I think that's just laying this sort of foundation of, I don't know, what's to come in this movie. The lane, you mentioned that he's the master of ceremonies, he's the main guy. I That's almost that. the, the yeah. key to the mystery at the end. He's making this whole story up based off of a cane he's got yeah. with a rabbit. Yeah, yeah. And mean, the theme of that animal it's is strange. something that's prevalent throughout. You mentioned the T-shirt yeah. at one point when we did the watch along. It's it's throughout that animal, it's throughout the actual movie. It's so funny, that's an yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's a strange one because that sequence with the rabbit, I think I might have said during the watch along, I don't know if it made the cut or not, I said, what was that all about? Yeah. Understand what it was all about. We assumed the car crash, the, the screeching of the car was was him, was him and that's how that's how he's blinded. He's blind, yeah, but it wasn't. Yeah, we didn't realise yeah. at that point he was yeah. acting. So uh, structurally, we'll get into the structure. I'm sure we'll get into it right now. Yeah, it might as well, John. Structurally, the movie is definitely very interesting. Uh, how they play the different acts. How, as you say, they use Sophie almost as a conduit to bring, as, as I says, I should say, to bring a cash in to the sort of forefront of this. A destructive marriage I'm going to call it that yeah. ends with a death she is that's her primary she reason she brings him to the club she he's brings introduced him to the club. obviously to Pramod Pramod and, and, and then that brings him in to see yeah. me and obviously yeah. Manoha the inspector the sort of bumbling 16 <laughs> egg a day <laughs> inspector Manoha <laughs> egg a day he's just <laughs> honest to god an absolute gimp of a character uh, uh, in this movie in terms of his performance John I know we'll get into that as well um you, it was brilliant. You, you said it was uh, similar to what you would watch in those old black and white yeah, comedy. Charlie Chaplin, yeah, sort of all of a hardy. Yeah, Buster Keaton type yeah. thing. He was very animated, very physical in his sort of approach. And what helped that, Stephen, yeah. and, and that look, well, I'll get into that as well, it's, it's off the cuff. There's going to be no rhyme or reason to this fucking review. We're not going to try and keep the shackles on. Yeah. We'll just, as we're coming up and saying things, we'll speak one mind. That scene in the apartment, with the body, Pramod yeah, yeah. is lying slumped, <clears throat> And Akash is playing the piano, trying to kid on he's not seen anything or is seeing anything. And he's playing the piano music. It's overlaying just the most bizarre shit you'll ever witness yeah. in a lifetime if you were in the unfortunate position he's in. They're dragging his body. They're cleaning up the smashed wine glass. He's sitting, putting a flat cap on, trying to look like Pramod. He's they've bungled the body into this <laughs> fucking suitcase. You're right, Stephen, it's... I did say that, and I think you agreed as well. It's yeah. almost like uh, the, the sort of silent movies of 70 years ago. Yeah. He's acting up in a sort of physical manner, 
to the backdrop of this piano music, it's like a fucking callback. I can't help but think that was deliberate. The situation as well, John, reminded me of a Coen Brothers film, uh, where you've got this ridiculous situation that they find yeah, themselves you said in, that, yeah. and and uh, instead of just doing things basic and and getting out of there and moving on, the, everything spirals out of control. You get the nosy neighbours getting involved, obviously. A cash is involved. He's going straight to the police station, <laughs> and, and obviously scene, the yeah. inspector's right there. I didn't notice that. Anyway. Was it was you, John. I went there. He is, and I went. Oh, I looked I up and he was there. It when I yeah. seen him. John, that was a, a nice shot. Though, that, that was the best part of the movie because I felt the, 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 the way that the sort of camera angled was focusing on. Um, a cash and who he was talking to behind the desk, and just in the background you see the inspector just yeah, looking, but sort of peering over the door. As if I'm here, by the way, and I didn't notice him at first, and I think that was a good trick from the camera, um, was to sort of we're we're looking at the perspective of a cash and 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 he's focused on that. I've got to tell them the truth and tell them what's happened, and then obviously that happens, and he's got to say it was a his cat went missing or something like that. And, and oh yeah, and that yeah. and Steen was about to get into that all the while building the cash character, his personality. You're seeing that this guy's very quick of thought. Yeah, he's good at bullshitting. <laughs> and he will come up with things on the hop and try and bluff himself out of situations. You can see why he's lived this sort of double life of blindness when he's actually got sight. How he's able to then perhaps pull the wool over Sophie's eyes at the end. I don't think he did. I think she knew he was she had, he had sight yeah. of some sort. I don't think she was buying it. She gave him a look at the end of the movie. But he's the sort of heroic protagonist who's thrust into this situation. But I wouldn't see he's a, a particularly whiter than white character no he's definitely got some naughtiness under the surface this guy he's John, not cleaner than clean you see that in the, 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 the second uh, probably two thirds of the way through you're seeing it when they actually have uh, the semi character tied up yeah and you see the nastiness within a cash and the revenge in them the, yeah. the vengeance in them you know dri- that's driving that's another thing about the structure John I know we're kind of getting back around no, the structure no, no, it's, in terms of that sort of sequence and that where we were at at the story and I'm thinking we still got a good 45-50 minutes of this mm-hmm. To go, I thought this would have been the sort of climax, but then another thing happens, you know, and we we'll yeah. get this other group of actors that come in, and they're all about uh, transplants and taking organs out of bodies and stuff like that. It just uh, there was never a time when I thought I knew what was going on and I can predict what was going on at all. But but it was intelligent, Stephen, and in its utilization because the actual character Mavashi also she's hanging around with um, I think it's Murley, yeah. the other sort of Tweedledum and Tweedledee sort of dodgy chancer characters are selling the sort of scratch cards. She appears midway through the movie, or maybe not even that. Mm. It's, I think it's round about the point just before he's going to the actual apartment to promote, yeah. to play for the actual anniversary or whatever the fuck it is. They introduce her yeah. sort of superficially, then yeah. she comes back at the end of the movie. You're like, I recognise that character. Yeah. They do that throughout this movie. They'll introduce concepts and then they'll come back to it. You and talk clear about recognising people, John, in terms of uh, Ayushman uh, Kurani. Um, <coughs> we've seen so many films and we've seen so many trailers over the last two years in terms of Indian cinema. And sometimes it's very hard to keep track of all the faces, the familiar faces. For for uh, whatever reason, uh, Ayushman Kurani, I knew we hadn't seen. I yeah. knew we hadn't seen him in a film. We had seen him in a trailer though, because mm-hmm. I did recognise his face, John. Uh, Bad Eye Ho. Bad Eye Ho, yeah. He was in that one. It was the arranged marriage thing um, that was going on. You could check that out, the trailer reaction for it. A very funny trailer, yeah. John, but I don't know if you remember. It was two years ago. But I that's don't. what I recognised him from. <laughs> I knew it, I knew the face, but I knew we hadn't saw him in a film. Yeah, I thought, and look, he, we'll get into the performance, I'm sure, but he was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, I mean, Stephen, I. I well, for me also the third act where all the cerebral stuff happens that's when it all comes to the fore what they've been building and there's sort of twist galore going on in there that has its plus and its negatives though mm. and we'll get into a negative just now in terms of the structure you have to be fucking completely switched on thankfully I'm editing this movie the, the actual, yeah. I'm editing the videos as we're going along so I'm seeing this movie twice yeah. sometimes three times so I'm see, I've seen everything uh, yeah. In terms if of you're a review, John, this for that one benefits you, but in terms of watch along, it's first time reaction. Yeah. 
it and is. that's what we get judged on quite a we bit. We get judged on this uh, first because time it's first time, but it's very hard to pick up a lot of stuff first time round. But it certainly is, Stephen. I didn't even recognise the rabbit was blind in the opening shot and the sort of well, that. It was you point blind in one eye. Yeah, which was apparently the same as a cash at the end of the movie potentially. Or, or the same, he, he was blind in one eye. I think the blindness was more prominent in this eye than in that because when he puts his head in the actual bucket of water, you can see one eye's far. That's right. Yep. going in the other. Yep. Uh, so the rabbit's him. He is the rabbit in that story. He's been shot at, he's been harried, but he ultimately prevails. He gets away, <laughs> despite the sort of sort of close brush with death, if you'd like. The Grim Reaper, the, the black widow that is see me. Yeah. But where was I going with that? Yeah, structurally, man, the complexity of it, you, you need to be switched on watching this movie, yeah. Stephen. And if you're not, if you miss even one bit of dialogue, you, you're not paying attention to one scene. You get to the last 40 minutes, there's shit going on, you're like, what the fuck's happening here? Yeah. And I know... You've not had the chance to perhaps watch the movie as many times as I have in editing. Yeah. And you certainly, your initial thoughts watching it, and look, I probably agree with you at the time, <laughs> but since I've edited it, I'm yeah. now like, I see what they're doing here. Yeah. I and mean, it was the same with fucking um, Gangs of Wassie Poor as well. When I was, we were doing the watch along, there'd be things I'd be like, struggling with, and then in the edit, I'm seeing things, I'm like, oh, there yeah. you go, she's made this call, that's happened. That's what you call a layered film though, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it's got many layers, and I'm pretty sure most people in our community have probably seen it and have done a few times, not just once like myself. But John, in terms of structure, um, first time viewing it can come across as a bit sketchy and a bit oh, blink you miss it type thing, you know, and, and interpretation as well is important. A lot of sort of signs in there, a lot of messages that might go over your head if you're not paying attention. Certainly there would have been ones that went by my by my head, which I don't mind because I can always go back and watch this yeah. film and understand it a lot more. But in terms of basing it on that first time watch and f- particularly the last 40 minutes of the film, there was twists and turns all the time. You, you ended up, you, you didn't know what to believe. You were maybe not trusting the characters as much as you were at the beginning of the movie because they were all just kind of backstabbing each other. It's yeah. like a battle of survival at the end particularly with the, the, the sort of three cast members that came in f- at the hospital scenes the yeah. doctor and the other two yeah with um, Ashley and Murley and I think it was Dr Shwami yeah you know and you're thinking oh they're going to team up because and we c- kind of made some predictions that were kind of right and some that were just way off in terms of they'll get ma- more money for yeah. obviously Simi and, and obviously her org- organs and, and her partner that didn't play out he get <laughs> he didn't even survive the yeah. elevator so um, there, there's things in there. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a negative as yeah. well, Stephen. They never address Manaha. No, what I happened think, to him? Well, he, he goes to black. He fires a shot. I was laughing my head off. I at think that. it's just to highlight the important. He's not that important yeah, really. He's, not, he's, yeah. he's a he's a gimp, as we like to say here. You know, and it was a, it was was a, a, good, him, it was a good ending. Uh, what was it? A body bold, made out of flatulence. <laughs> <'Cause> Sixteen <laughs> boiled eggs a day is n- uh, not a good idea. If you <laughs> want to do bodybuilding. I've dabbled with it, certainly not got to like a fucking sort of good banging on his name here for some Pandit level. Yeah. That's a Mirzapur yeah. reference. Uh, Fasal has uh Fasal what's his second name? Why am I like Fasal? Ali Fasal, yeah. that's why I'm yeah. blanking on it. I'm doing his second name first. It's been one of those days. <laughs> I'm certainly day. certainly yeah. not got to Ali Fasal's level of yeah. physique, an absolute monster, or a Salmon can, for instance. John, the bathroom scene though, but with um, boiled eggs, no. with a cash and the inspector when he, he says, "Can I use your bathroom after the murder?" I thought it was very intense because yeah. he's standing in the shower that, with a gun. That was a fucking, thought, that nails. was a great moment, Stephen. Yeah. But it shows you the character, you know, a cash and how he, he could hold his nerve during the scene where they're wrapping up the body and he's still playing the piano. I would have went to pieces up there. Yeah. I'd have been in shock. <laughs> he kept his calm, and especially in that bathroom scene as well. He knew he was there, but he had to pretend oh, he could you see, the, And we'll get into the acting. We have to talk about the performance of Ayushman in that yeah. sequence. Just a little physical glance. You can see he's wearing glasses, and you yeah. can still see his glance to that guy sitting or standing <laughs> yeah. to the side of him. And he has to act like he's not there. That is just absolutely stupendous. Some of the physical acting in this, because he is wearing glasses a lot yeah. of the time, is just brilliant. The fact he isn't blind in real life, a lot of those sequences he's took the sort of contact lenses off that make him look blind, and they're trying to weigh up and test him in his own apartment. They're like doing that and they're throwing things at him. For him not to blink and not to yeah. look, absolutely brilliant acting from Ayushman in those moments. 
And you talk about the sort of structure of the movie, Stephen. This is probably the final thing I'll say. And we'll, go, we'll go on and speak about the story. I'm yeah. sure we'll move on to like performances and stuff as well. But there's three distinct stories within this one story, for me anyway. At the start, you've got this sort of comedic comedy romance musical sort of thing going on with the piano. Yeah. Sophie, obviously, a cash. That happens. Then you've got the murder of Pramod. And it turns into a sort of crime fucking drama with musical elements. And then it turns into a full blown mystery of what's going to happen with this guy who's been blinded, getting into the final third. And then it's like fucking yeah. thriller elements going on in there as well. Is he going to get his eyesight back? Yeah. The sort of borderline Nolan mystery stuff getting mixed in at the end. Has he got his sight back? Did he hit that yeah. can deliberately? It's like this sort of spinning. I don't know what the fuck you call that even now from yeah. t- um, Inception. Did, did Alfred see um, ba- d- Bruce Wayne? Uh, you know, sitting obviously at the cafe. Was that just a vision? His dream? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it is. You're right. You, you mentioned right, all the genres yeah. on IMDb. They dabble with all the, They yep. definitely juggle all those genres in this movie. It's not just there. Yeah. And it's like, but, but there's elements. They take these genres and fully fucking realise them in this movie and they're split and spread over. Obviously, the musical thing, him being a pianist, is the one constant throughout this entire yeah, movie. Yeah. But they're dabbling with very distinct stuff through the different acts of this movie. Comedy, borderline romance, sort of st- crime stuff going on when the actual death happens and it's bodies getting fucking old women getting thrown off balconies and stuff. It's like drama. Sort of stuff like that then you get the thriller and mystery in the final act there's distinct stuff happening in each of the acts yeah. and that makes it a very enjoyable watch we didn't want to stop watching was, this movie there was, a, there was elements of comedy throughout the yeah. other genres as well John whether it be slapstick whether it be just um, that Dark scene humor. you know the, the scene where, where Simi beating uh, a cash up when they were tied up and yeah. then I I was what, was she, what was she hitting them with again? Uh, with a crutch with a crutch yeah, yeah. <laughs> no the she, best bit was when she hit the she doctor hit the doctor, yeah. the doctor came and in a cash physical comedy you know and everyone likes a good slapstick every now and again but as you said there was a lot of black and, and dark comedy in there as well when that the neighbour gets thrown off the deep, balcony you know? he witnesses it yeah. and he has to duck and kid on his bent down to get something so he, she doesn't see his shock and sort of horror there's so many moments in there of dark humour. Also, when Murley gets shot as well, and he's sort of gargling in his own blood, yeah. and she's trying to throw money at them, bring him back. That's not how life works. Yeah. That was dark humour as well. And then in that moment, just crushing for the Mavashi character, she's realising as she's lost her sort of partner in crime, her friend, that the money's fake. Yeah. There's so much stuff yeah. going on in this movie. <laughs> it's layered. It's dense as hell. Just little stuff, throw away things that are not even that important to a cash and see me in the sort of primary plot. There's density within the side. I mean, the cash is elements of the story. definitely a reactionist. I mean, his purpose and his, his goal in life was to get to London. That's all he wanted. He, yeah. You know, he, he had his own life, he had his own life sorted, and he was just going on. And then he was the wrong guy in the wrong place at the wrong time. And then, yeah. as I said, you know, reactionary, he's reacting to the, the way pe- he's been prodded with people particularly the semi character, you know, and they will extract some revenge on her and that's where the character has to develop. That's where the character has to become believable. He can't be he can't be this good goody two shoes for the first half of the movie, then turn dark. There's that prodding going on yeah. throughout the the film and it's that's down to good writing, John. And Stephen, the final thing I'll say in terms of structure and elements being introduced and then concluded at the end of the movie, the song he's working on, it's finished, it's not finished. Yeah, yeah. It's haunting them. He's becoming frustrated. He has all these sort of interactions. And then by the end of the movie, it's bookmarked. He's yeah. finished the song. No it's stone is complete... left unturned, yeah. You know, that's that's down to the director, John, the writers. He's a complete yeah. man. Yeah. He's been through this journey. And he's finally finished the music as well. I thought that was sort of this movie in a microcosm, if yeah. you'd like. But in terms of the actual story, Stephen, how do you feel the, the story, I mean, away from the structure realm, do you feel like the story felt fulfilling? when it was all concluded. Yeah, yeah. Just in terms of what John, they were doing here, but what did you make of the story, the Stephen? Story, obviously, the, the it's story about was, this guy yeah. faking blindness, he's yeah. thrust into a horrible situation, yeah. and then he actually does become blind, and then at the end, it goes full circle. And it's almost like, you have to go through the horrors of actual blindness to realise that you shouldn't be fucking faking it, but he doesn't. Yeah. He, he fakes it right at the end as well. Yeah, I mean, John, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 will, I will say one thing in terms of um, story. He didn't have to kick that can at the end. He didn't. That, I thought that was too on the nose. 
And I was like, no, just leave that. You don't need that because we get it. If you watch enough of these thrillers and you're watching enough film and you you mention Chris Nolan there, John, we get it. We don't have to have it on the nose. It always bugged me about the Dark Knight Rises when they had that scene about the auto, automatic pilot thing being mm-hmm. deactivated. I'm like, we don't fucking need that. We, yeah. That's just that's just paint by numbers storytelling. That trust your audience and and don't put that in. You don't have to have them kick the can. We get it, you know. But in terms of the actual story, John, I thought it was a very interesting story, and it was, it's the classic being the wrong guy at the wrong place at the wrong time, as I mentioned, you know, and and how you deal with that, and you can't have your character staying the same throughout the movie. He's got to be reacting to the situation and, and reacting to the other characters that are around them that are put them in that situation. I felt they did that very organically with the Cash character, where he went from just being very dedicated musician, keeping himself to himself bit of a love interest with Sophie and then everything just goes to shit, you know, and how, how he deals with that. And it's almost it's a great. lesson, as yeah. I say, Stephen, of of not going too far into these sort of false lives, if you'd like. Because yeah. there's a lot of fantasists out there that will take themselves down avenues they shouldn't be going down. Yeah. And they're, they're backed into a corner. And he's ultimately backed into a corner by Simi. She knows he's lying. Yep. She gives him this offering. He has to take it. He can't say, no, I'm not fucking taking that. Because he's, he's just, he's crafted such a web of lies and with this <laughs> whole blindness thing, it's took him into this horrific situation. He ultimately is robbed of his sight for real. Yeah. And where that takes him, it must have took him to a really dark place, the actual character. For him to go full circle at the end, he must have became a better rounded person by the end of that fucking movie. And you I feel like so, yeah. his ability yeah. to finish the song... As I keep, I keep saying, without it's about symbolism, John. I it's think it's symbolic yeah, that yeah. he is now. He was incomplete. Now he is complete. Yeah. So it wasn't for nothing. That's what I'm saying. He's got. He's maybe not got to London. I don't know if he'd ever did get to London, but he's in France. It looks like Central it does Europe. Look like France, yeah. And he's became this sort of respected musician. People are coming up and shaking his hands. He is where he wants to be. Sophie seems happy as well. Yeah. Yeah. The the good people ultimately have got their just desserts yeah. and. Simi has been harvested for organs and got her just desserts. A vile, vindictive character, person, if you like. I enjoyed the story as well, Stephen. Yeah. I enjoyed it. I like a good cerebral story. It was a little bit overcomplicated in parts. If I wasn't editing it and watching it again, there would have been elements that went over my head. I'm not going to yeah. lie. Even now, I could probably go back and watch it again. Yeah. And there'd be more things I'd see. But you can do a comparison and say, many times did you watch Pulp Fiction before you yeah. you understood the, the whole structure of the film? It's what it's just one of those things that a layered film may take multiple viewings. It has got re watchability because it you know it's not just a case of I need to watch this again because I can't understand a thing that's happening here. It's things that you might have just missed subtle things, you know. And so. you've got and you've got to commend Sri Ram Raghavan, yeah, yeah, for having the balls to take yeah. on such a complex that, story yeah, yeah. which is dense and all of its various elements and see it through at the end. Delivering great performances. It was well wrote, Stephen. Yeah. The story for me was one of the absolute standouts in this movie. Sort of little niggles aside. In terms of performances, yeah. uh, there's a couple of standouts in here. Um, obviously, Anil Dewan is Pramod Cena. He's not the primary standout, but no. the brief moments he's in the movie, he strikes me as such a a mod, not maybe not modest, but he's a, a righteous character. He's obsessed with his past, yeah. his past sort of glory. But he's a fundamentally good guy. He's trying to please this wife figure. He's a lot younger than him. You see him coming home with the box of chocolates, the flowers and the wine. I think that's just a highlight. I think there's a 20 year gap between the actors. I don't know what the gap was between the characters, but it's just to show he is a nice guy, he is a good guy, and Simi must have saw something in him at some point, you know, not just an old guy that's a bit of a has been. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) so, yeah, well, that's that as well, I suppose. But you're absolutely right, John. We talked about this at the very beginning when I introduced the, the, when I was mentioning the, the actors, you know, involved in this film, and I think those five are the sort of standouts. You've got your maybe your, your primary cast and then your secondary cast. They're definitely when you look at the likes of Tabu, Ayushman, uh, Radhika, Anil, and Man is it Manav? Manav Vish, um, yeah. I think they're your main five characters in this, and then obviously you get the Doctor, etc. After that, and your sort of secondary cast. But the, I thought the casting was fantastic. There was again, it was all about different personalities all coming together in this sort of storyline. You know, there was no two characters similar. Now, Stephen, they all fulfilled their duties. Yeah. Radhika played the sort of romantic interest very well. Also, at the end, she has her moment 
with a cash. Yeah, I mean she's the uh, with a Yushman uh, also. She's the sort of moral of the story, you know, the the sort of the one with the the morals, you know, and and the one that's she's not done the dirty on anyone, you know. She's just she's very attracted to a cash, you know, and she can see obviously a very handsome man. He's very talented uh, and a likable person as well. And you see that connection between the two of them. Obviously, through Radhika Apti, uh, the performance you can see that. Yeah, and uh, but, the but chemistry. Stephen and Manav, as we spoke about, very physical, almost silent. Yeah, actor. It was good. Parts. Yeah, it was. He good. brought the, the he certainly brought the comedy for me with his final <laughs> scene in the movie when he shoots a, a loaded firearm in a small metallic confined <laughs> space. Yeah. yeah. What did you think was going to happen there, Manav? <laughs> It's going to ricochet and hit you, mate. You're the only fucking soft thing in that environment. It's going to hit you at some point. Yeah. That was one of the st- stupidest fucking things I've seen a character do in a, a film. And it his was wife, almost his fitting. wife was good as well, Ashwini. Uh, she was, was good. Kaliskar or something. Yeah, like I think that was a wife's name. Um, yeah. Just that scene where she shot the gun. <laughs> He's was, cowering in the yeah, room. Yeah, that was brilliant. <laughs> and you can almost understand why he was fucking trying to get away there and maybe explore different options. She's almost more psychopathic than him, and mm. he is a killer. Mm. But Stephen, also a Yushman and Taboo, they, for me, are the two standouts in this movie. Radhika did well, I enjoyed her. She's yeah, not in it enough. Yeah. A Yushman, it's a movie about him, Yeah. Uh, ultimately, and he is the, the the sort of master of ceremonies, as you did say. I thought he'd done a fantastic job. Yeah. He brought real love into it, sort of romantic stuff at the start. I thought he did a great job of that. He brought the, the sort of real pain of someone losing their sight in the middle of a movie mm. it felt I'm trying to think of the word that's springing to mind and nothing is really capturing the sort of horror that you would experience if you lost your sight yeah but he brought the horrors to sort of real life I can't I don't even know what I'm saying here he brought the horrors yeah no I, I get what you're saying John. he realised yeah. it on screen yeah. it was great performing was, the moment yeah. he puts his head in the bucket yeah. For me, he's one of he's the best visual the street moments. At night, blind, I mean, that hitting was, the fucking yeah, pole and yeah. stuff like that. Terrifying. And as you did mention, just the sort of hoodwinking moments in the bathroom, in the apartment. But Stephen, just brilliant acting, physical acting. First time I've seen this guy, as you mentioned, we've seen him in two trails. I want to see more of this guy's work. I thought he was yeah. absolutely fantastic. Yeah. A cash. He's one of the standouts. For me, Tabu, though, is going to steal it as a standout performer. She does a brilliant, villainous turn yeah. in this movie. She isn't. I mean, I was calling her a, a sort of psychopath in the watch along. I think she was an evil black widow. But when you think about it, I don't. I still don't. I'm not convinced she. Obviously, she didn't. It was actually Manath. I think it was the the Manath character Manoha who fires a shot. I think it was all a big misunderstanding. They got the timings wrong. He does slip. The gun maybe gets fucking picked up. Something happens. He gets killed. Yeah, it's she's never shown. It, is it? It's, it's never, never shown. Yeah. yeah. I think she's just put in there. Also, she kills the neighbour, but the neighbour was a bastard. She deserved it. She had to clean up the loose ends. She spares a cash. She doesn't want to kill a cash. She says at one point to him, I don't want to turn into some serial killer, uh, but this has to end somewhere. Yeah. So, although she is playing a real villain, I don't think she's an out-and-out out, fucking devil reincarnate character. She's just been thrust into a really bad situation and she's had to do some Still crazy a things. Murderer, John. She's a murderer. <laughs> but she brought some humour as well, Stephen. John, you, um, just, you can't overlook the crutch uh, scene. You can't overlook. About, we are talking about the actor as well here. And yeah. you know, when an, act, an actor can portray someone that gets under your skin the way that see me does, then you know they're a good actor, you know, and, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing more of her work. She's obviously got a a career behind her uh, before this film as well mm-hmm. that we have to check out but you can sense that you know whenever this actress is in the room she owns the room she certainly did in this film and you're absolutely right if I was to pick between uh, Ayushman and, and Tabu I'd probably just edge it with Tabu I think because sometimes um, actors prefer playing the villains they have more fun because when you're playing the sort of the hero he's not much a hero but He's more the sort of light side to the dark side, if you like. Um, actors like that because they can be a wee, they can be a wee bit more flexible um, in terms of how they they come off. And I can imagine the director. And I've read some of the, the, the actual trivia in this film, John. The, yeah. the director gave them a lot of sort of leeway in terms of, you know, um, 
been spontaneous or um, I'm trying yeah, to think so of the word um, improvisation know, improv, uh, yeah, yeah. improv yeah um, I got know. the word I was looking for as well Stephen Visceral Visceral, <laughs> visceral <laughs> horror of losing eyesight I, but, used yeah, I job think it. for me Taboo is just edging it yeah Stephen look, Taboo was brilliant uh, moments that spring to mind for me that really emphasise how good the performance was just the stuff in the apartment with Manaha, obviously. She was the one that slapped the child, wasn't it? She, no, we don't see it, do we? No, no I think that, Sophie? that was Sophie that slapped it? the child, yeah. She she just deleted the video <laughs> as a sort of, can, again, pantomime villain. <laughs> <laughs> now no one knows that he was not truly blind and I've blinded him. I have won. <laughs> now you can focus on being a musician. Well, he doesn't. He focuses on taking your eyes yeah. so you can see well sure <laughs> harvested. <laughs> For your audience, you fucking bastard. Oh, brilliant performance from her. Also, the apartment stuff, the moment she throws the neighbour off the balcony. Yeah. It's great. The stuff in the actual storeroom in the hospital when she's blindfolded, she's telling him he takes the blindfold off, she's trying to get the scissors to cut and release herself. She's directing him, deliberately throwing him into walls and stuff like that, and then smirking. Just brilliant little performances yeah. in there. So I thought she was absolutely outstanding, Taboo. Her and Ayushman, though, are the two best for me. Technical stuff, Stephen. Yeah. No, there's not, some, not too much technical there's things not, I want to really get into. In terms there's there's of, some really good shots in there. Um, in terms of music, I think we, we can't not ignore the music. In this. The music in this was fantastic. I always find with music films, songs. though, John, that sometimes um, the music kind of um, clouds the, the actual score in the yeah. film. And there, there, was a, 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 there was a score in the film, but for me, the music obviously has to stand out because the biggest part of the story is obviously the music. And I was so um, in, involved in listening to the music throughout the sequences as well. Throughout, I just thought the music was fantastic. I really enjoyed the one when they were singing about the kidney. I think it was the kidney scene when yeah. he's in the hospital. That was a good song. A lot of really good catchy stuff in the actual bar as well when he's playing and they're up and dancing and stuff like that. Yep. Obviously, the one at the end is probably the best for me. Yeah, um, Because that's just him. Yeah. As a, I think that's usually symbolic, the song. Yep. It just bookends where the character's been, where he's at now. It's a whole story. He was incomplete now, he's complete. And he was obviously playing a blind man now, he's complete it, and he's, he's still technically playing a blind man. Um, I don't know why I keep trying to get down and find symbol. He's still kidding on his blind right <laughs> at the end of this movie. He's a shyster, a cash. But yeah, the, the music for me was really good. I enjoyed the score. I thought the score was not the standout. For me, I agree with you, it was the actual songs that were the standout. And yeah. that's why the music belongs in the genre. Yeah. So part of this, the comedy crime music that's definitely got musical elements in it it goes back to what I said earlier very La La Land like yeah, yeah. technical stuff in terms of the actual cinematography, I thought the cinematography was very 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 good mm. the scene you mentioned at Stephen as well that springs to mind is when Manahar's running up the stairs yeah. trying to get to the I mean, level where the briefcase is it's a very easy shot to you know one of those sort of uh, telescopic cameras you get yeah. on the string just pull it up, pull it up it's it's a, but it's very effective it's, it's very effective yeah. but there's other stuff going on in there as well sort of wide shots of the house the moment with the bucket I keep going on about this yeah, that bucket was a great shot, yeah. but it's brilliant that was Tarantino-esque it was Tarantino-esque yeah sort of how they made that work I don't know yeah. I'd imagine there'd have been glass yeah. the cameras yeah. there the water's <laughs> yeah. above I never but, thought of that actually yeah, yeah you're right. it's very well done yeah. Yeah, it's a great shot it's, it's simple in nature but it's very effective in showing you where this guy's mindset is it's sheer panic again yeah. the visceral horror of being blinded after and you'd think with him being or playing this blind character throughout the movie or throughout his life to this point he'd have got a sort of a feel for what it's like to live in this world he's been using the blindfolds he's had the actual contact lenses on yeah. which must distort his sight Yeah, but he, he was fucking completely lost like he was in a maze like a rat in a lab maze <laughs> lost this guy when he actually lost his sight and you see the panic you see him screaming he's fucking yeah. acting irrationally I want my sight back. You've got to do it. That was evil. As if this character who's killed people is not evil before that moment. <laughs> you were willing to go along with the death of a poor, innocent woman who's a nosy bastard. But now that she's blinded you, she's evil. But I digress, man. Some brilliant technical yeah. stuff going on in there. I really enjoyed that. That's always important as well in a movie like this. Especially when you've got this guy living with a wife. Yeah. Uh, that you're sort of seeing those little elements. You're seeing the little moments where he's catching them doing things and he has to stay one step ahead. Yeah, that's it, yeah. The bizarre moment with the ghost face. And just them try to catch him out when he's in the apartment. That's, that's captured well. Yeah. I don't know what the soundtrack was all about in that moment. That was a bit fucking weird. Yeah. But still, 
I think <laughs> but there may have been a, a will, what the fuck do you call it? A Wilhelm scream? I don't know if there Wilhelm was. scream, yeah. When the yeah. old woman, I may be wrong there, mm. may not. I'll have to go back and check that, yeah. It may have been when the actual scream mask popped up, Lord yeah. knows. <laughs> but technically I enjoyed it. Yeah. Is there anything else to touch upon before we get no. to the actual end? Maybe discuss the ending itself, Stephen, because we never truly discussed the whole rabbit thing, coming back to the rabbit again. When I realised, I kind of, before we even seen the yeah. rabbit, I kind of realised that you they were going it. there. Yeah, I'm like, John, you mentioned it, yeah. and I actually said, I think you're right here, John, I think yeah. I, I know. And when they would do get to see that sort of scene, and it kind of bookends, yeah. you know, it just kind of, it's, it's like almost like an Ouroboros, yeah. uh, you know, the, the actual story, because yeah. full circle, and I think... Um, I love it when that happens in a film and it just everything falls into place. You see it in our reaction. We're like, yeah. oh, yes, yes, that's it. Yeah. yeah, and it just, everything fits. I love it when they do that. You know, there's, and, and, and we have to commend the director again and the writers, you know, in terms of just tying those loose ends. I know we talk about, obviously, the inspector not getting that sort of loose end. Did mm. they survive the shot? Did they not? He died. As far as I'm concerned, no, he, he died. died. He was stuck in that. But, bell, um, yeah. John, it was just a great ending. It was just, perfect the way and everything just fell into place after that you know after that sort of hectic uh, period the last 40 minutes prior to the last 10 minutes I would say so you've got that half hour of just mentalness um, everything just started falling into place it it's a hard thing to do in that short space of time and visually technically really yeah. well imagined rabbit um, even down to the blind eye yeah. just brilliant yeah. CG the was way fantastic they did it. Yeah. and obviously it was all fantasy yeah. um, because he was making this story up for Sophie <laughs> Again, showing you the sort of deviousness within this character. Mm. He's not goody two shoes, this guy. He will lie if it suits his agenda. And we've seen that time and time again throughout the actual story. It's one constant trait with this guy. He is the good guy in terms of the overall picture. Yeah. But he is not fucking whiter than white, sort of, sort of deity, religious figure. This guy has got some darkness in him as well. I enjoyed it. Um, I agree with you though, uh, with the whole sort of smashing a can thing, that was a bit on the nose. Yeah. But it is what it is, man. Some people yeah, maybe required it. Um, I, I suspected that he was, he had sight, because I could see through the glasses as well, and I could see he didn't. He his didn't body language mind. as well was a little bit more confident. He, yeah. he knew his whereabouts kind of thing, you know. And he's playing the fucking piano, enough. and he's it's playing enough. it well. Yeah. Which I'd imagine as a guy who was truly blind, who was kidding on he was blind. And who was good in the piano when he was kidding on he was blind wouldn't be that good when he was actually blind. I, th- I think that's, you know what I'm getting at. Yeah, it's clear. Yeah. Very convoluted, but I digress. Stephen, rounding it up, overall thoughts in this movie. Look, we've watched many movies that are similar to this that have many twists and turns at the end. Off the top of my head, you think of The Usual Suspects, you think of Pulp Fiction, yeah. yep. you think of multiple fucking Nolan movies. There is a myriad of Western movies that are like this. The Heist one as well with Edward Norton. Yeah, uh, and I think Pacino potentially. I don't know if Pacino was in that. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, can't that remember. One. Yeah, there's, there's loads of movies like this. I yeah. love these movies. I love cerebral storytelling when it's done right. That's why I'm a huge fan of like Satanti. You know, I've known of people who push the envelope when it comes to storytelling with the script, with the performances out of the actors, and seeing it all come together nicely. I think they did a brilliant job with this story. I thought throughout, I was riveted. I never wanted to stop watching it. That's usually a good sign. Yep. We had we actually changed this from a four part reaction to a three part reaction because yeah, we because it was that yeah. fucking good. Yeah. yeah. So I can't be talking the story down. I can't be talking the film down when I was enjoying it that much. Ultimately, what is rating a movie? It's all about your enjoyment. Yeah. Your takeaway. You can get all convoluted and break it down, as we've yeah. did for forty odd minutes. But ultimately, it comes down to how much enjoyment did you get out of the movie? I enjoyed this movie a tremendous amount. Yeah, I, I, would, the I, would, I would agree, package. John, in terms of, um, and you've seen it time and time again because you do the editing yes. and when we're doing the watch along, so I think you'll get more of it in terms of depth than I will. In terms of a first time viewing, I felt structurally it was as good as it was going to get in terms of all the sort of twists and turns in that last 40 minutes, um, making it as organic and believable as possible. Because that's a very hard thing to do um, in terms of what's coming next. I didn't see that coming. I didn't see that coming. And sometimes I think if they overdo that, it could piss your audience off. Mm-hmm. And I think they've just done it and they've p- pulled the reins in just at the right time. And I think they handled that well. I got a lot out of this film, John. It's Again, I enjoy films mostly when they're layered and I want to go back and see them again because of the things I missed. I got that in the likes of Pulp Fiction. 
a lot of the Coen Brothers stuff as well. But I also like just touching on the Coen Brothers stuff. Is that sort of simple situation they put themselves into? It's not simple. Somebody's been obviously <laughs> murdered or died. Um, no, but, but there is they, they've made it more complicated yeah. and it had to be, yeah. you know, and tying all these loose ends up. If they just thought it through, I'm talking like a right serial killer here as if I plan things, but <laughs> I, I don't know how I'd react. I think I would just panic, you know, and that's what I'm talking about. Obviously, with our Dash character, I think just seeing him in that room, seeing all this unfold in front of him, and kept, he kept his calm. I just felt that was brilliant. The comedy in it as well. You can't miss the comedy in this film in terms of slapstick and dark humour. I think they got that right. I think they handled it right in the right moments. You take it too far with the slapstick, then it becomes a bit of a nonsense, and you think kind of lose the thriller aspect of the movie if they do it too often. But they did it just in the right moments. When it was getting maybe a little bit too dark, they just reined it in a little bit with a little bit of dark humour. I yeah. thought they did that really well. Yeah, totally. They balanced it, Stephen. Yeah. There was some really dark moments that left you in a low. Yeah. When he loses his sight, but then they quickly change it. And they give him the upper hand, he's prank calling. He's, he's sort of saying, look, I'm an inspector, or I'm a private detective, the nation yeah, wants to know. Yeah, that's it, they yeah. don't linger too long on the dark moments. Tonally, I think they, they got the balance absolutely bang on. I, I thought, obviously, as you mentioned, the humour, the comedy moments in there, the, but the balance of these genres, yeah. the music, the performances. I enjoyed the movie a hell of a lot, Stephen. Um, we'll get into ratings. Yeah. Uh, it's yeah. out of 10. I'm going to give this movie an 8.5 out of 10. 8.5, yeah. I, I really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was a, a very a riveting experience. It's got great rewatchability. The fact that it is that kind of movie, there's so much going on, there is so much depth, if you can blink and miss things. Yeah. It's not the kind of movie like a sixth sense. Yeah. It's got a twist where it's one and done and it's never the same again after you've seen it. You can go back and rewatch this movie and almost like a, an episode of The Hustle. Yeah. Or something like that. A Columbo. Yeah. Because this doesn't give you a bow by bow of what was happening and then it's the build. Aha. Yeah. There is. You have to actually go back and watch it. So the fact it's got rewatchability, yeah. the fact that I really enjoyed it, the, the experience of watching it, all the elements, 8.5 for me. I, I think could it, put, be pushed yeah, in John, it, but I'll give it an 8.5. It's 8. funny 5. that because, you know, when you get into this kind of rating and, and when you're getting into a review, it's not until you discuss the film that you, you sometimes your rating can alter. Mm -hmm. We've done it ourselves, John. We've either come back down the way or went up the way with the rating. In terms of that, I was going to give it a seven point five, but I'm I, I'm seeing it through a perspective of someone that's seen it multiple times and yourself as well, John. Things that I forgot about. Um, I'm going to rate this an eight, uh, and based on most of the things you've said, John. But also, I like when a film leaves those little blanks that you can fill in as well. That yeah. there are obvious things, but. That's trusting your audience. That's not treating your audience like idiots and, and treating them like laymans that you have to paint everything, paint by numbers and explain everything to them. They left just little bits in there that you could obviously just fill in yourself and interpret yourself as well. And yeah. when you do that, you've got a director and writers that are confident enough to do that and trust their audience, then you know you've got a good film. And so it gives the, the movie yeah, longevity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, It gives it longevity because you can then go off and theorise about different things you'll have people disagreeing yeah we've seen that with the dark knight rises some people think bruce died some people think he survived and they'll argue online about it till the cats come home that's even a saying cows cows <laughs> i'm terrible with saying <laughs> i make sayings up I'm cats not the don't come home they do what they want <laughs> yeah well they, 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 yeah, well, the cats that we had actually didn't come home to be fair we lost a couple mm. no wonder when i was a child fucking damien better off child. with a cow Better off with a cow, yes. But Stephen, look, that aside, man, look, I've not got much more to say uh, on the movie. We have spoken the hind legs off of this. Yes. And not the cat's hind legs, the cow's <laughs> hind legs off of uh, this movie. We're a good 50 odd minutes in. It's yep. longer than I anticipated it to be, but that's what happens when you're off the cuff and you're doing things without structure. And we've got reactions to do as well. And we've got reactions to do as well. Let's go round it up, man. Yeah. Steam's gave it an 8. I've gave it an 8.5. What would you give Anderdun? Or Undedun? however you see it, that was someone in the comment section that says that's the way it's pronounced, not I, so don't come after me, don't kill or shoot the messenger, don't do a man of her and leave me to die in a darkened elevator over a mispronunciation, what's your thoughts on the movie, what would you rate the movie, share your thoughts down below about that, or review anything you feel compelled to share can go down below in the comment section, that's the place to put it, you can also like the video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, take notifications straight to your eyeballs, regardless of what you do though, Thank you for watching us, and until next time, me and Steve are done. Bye-bye.